Now we're moving into um, our detector, or basically the process inside a computer. Um, we talked about two in this class. Um, I'm going to talk about one here, and then the other one, um, one of your assignments, you're going to research it out. Um, so we talked about one that all standard um, computers today, all your PCs you use today, um, called the Van Neumann architecture. And basically you want to have a definition of it. It's, uh, it's two things um, that it takes to get a, get a task done. My computer. Um, first the computer needs what does a computer need to get a task done? A one and a zero. <laughs> Basically, you need a computer program, right? You need a program, which is your ones and zeros. It needs ones and zeros to um, interpret. Uh, basically, give it um, some kind of language. And then, um, and it needs the, the computer. Basically, it needs the computation needs to know how to compute. Um, needs to know how to solve mathematics, um, add, track, those kind of things. Um, so the binomial is split into five um, parts. Right? We have um, memory, a processing unit. A um, input, output, and a control unit. So, memory. What's memory? Stored. Yeah. So, this is where our program is stored. Stored in memory. Um, um, processing unit, um, we call it the um, ALU, the uh, Atomic Logical Unit, Arithmetic Logic Unit, um, hopefully input, kind of explanatory. We want to say keyboards, mouse, um, is inputs, outputs, monitor, printer, um, and then the control unit, um, it controls flow of execution, or of, of the instruction. So, it be like the, the drum major, or um, the cadence, who, um, how the um, um, system is being um, run by and controlled. Um, so, we're going to draw a nice diagram. So, I'm going to first start with um, the ALU, right? Uh, arithmetic, logic unit. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. This is the processing unit. Inside of the ALU. Why, why design it like uh, built like this? Uh, in a second, you'll understand. Uh, that's the LU, and then we have some a memory unit. Um, this is temporary storage. Uh, basically, help us do this arithmetic. So we have some temporary more, uh, memory place to uh, store um, um, our number that we're going to calculate, um, and it is connected. It can get information, you can store information to memory, and um, get information from memory. So this is 
and bring it here. I'll fill that in in a second. And then we have what is known as the control unit. Inside the control unit, we have um, it's called PC. Um, PC is stands for program counter. And then we have um, the instruction that is to be executed um, inside the control unit. And then, so the control unit controls everything. Um, so it has, it can go um, up to memory. Um, so it's controlling, basically it's controlling memory, how to read memory and controlling um, how to, uh, the process of the processing it. Um, <clears throat> then we have the uh, input. So we put input over or output over here. So output um, goes into memory and then it gets driven by our control unit. Um, the same with uh, input. Um, basically, ah, it's hard. Input goes into memory. Memory goes out to output. And then it gets driven by the process. Fill in uh, memory here. Inside memory, we have what is called the uh, MDR, Memory Data Register, which basically is um, what the data that we're trying to retrieve is stored here. So if I want to get to a certain memory location, chunk of memory. This is an address from 000 to FFF. Um, so then um, we have um, the MA, MAR, which is the memory address register. So inside here, if I put like 000, what memory does is this can take the contents what's in here, so I'm going to make it 555. Five, five. It's going to take the address, which is 000, zero, zero and take 555 five, five and put it into um, the data register. And so then, now, this data can be passed to the processing unit to do whatever we um, intended to do. So that's how we how memory is accessed. So, but, they have, but they have to use zero 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 to access it, right? Yeah. That's so, the address. Yeah. So I, I, like if I change this to any, to any number, like, you know, let's say F, 3F, it's going to go to whatever that location is, which is somewhere in here, and you're going to grab that chunk of memory and, you get different and, value. and uh, change that value. Now, if I want to store something, right, what I do is I want to put what I want to store. So I want to store, I don't know, three, three, four, five, some of that. I put that number here and based upon what my instruction is, because it's, it's controlling it through this line here. Um, um, and then I want to say, I want to 
to save it to you. Let's just say you save it to um, that location. So I have to tell it where I want to store it to and what I want to store so that when this instruction is executed, or when basically is, and I say, hey, write to memory to these locations, then this is going to get changed to 354. Okay. And so that's just based upon what the control unit tells memory what to do. So the control unit says, hey, I want you to get data. Or I want you to save data. And depending on what you put um, in the um, MAR and MDR, depends on um, where it gets saved to, what you're saving to, or what you're retrieving um, from memory. Right. MAR stands for Memory Address Register? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, um, One more and one thing. And the control unit is also what we call registers. Um, there's another chunk of memory, box of memory, um, that we use to um, basically is this transaction memory um, back to here is very slow to use. Um, and so we use registers for faster. Um, basically, we load from memory into a register so that we can do arithmetic faster. Because if I had to do arithmetic to memory and go back, I'd have to do this, go to an address, get the memory, load it in, and get another number, and constantly do that. If I have it already right here, I can just ship it to my ALU. Um, so we have um, fast memory. In the is register. that where the float point is taken care of? It's inside that. Floating point's an interesting thing. It depends on the architecture. I mean, if you're adding two integers together, you don't need to. There's two different math functions, right? One's for float, one's for um, addition. Is this what we're talking about here? Um, no. Um, basically, is if, if I basically if I didn't have these this memory location here. I would have to get my data from somewhere, right? right. So basically, I have to go to memory and get it. So I would have to constantly write an address here and then wait for the data to come get stored here because there is some time for memory to load this um, data in from memory. You have to wait for that. And then it has to be transferred over to a processing unit to, to calculate. And so I have to wait for this kind of reaction. If I have these temporary registers, I don't have to go out to memory. I already have it already there. Um, the architecture we use, we can't actually do math with this. We have to do math always with these. And so, um, uh, one, it's faster to do it that way. Um, floating point, if, if the processor handles it, does it in the ILU. Um, most floating point is done um, programmatically. So someone wrote a library or wrote a higher level language that went down to assembly to do Your Intel ones do. Um, I just work with a lot of ones that don't have floating point um, instructions. No, right. And this mm -hmm. memory you're talking about up here, that is, that's not RAM, is it? That's memory that's in No, this is, this is RAM. This is That's this all is, RAM. Yeah. I mean, isn't there memory other than that? Uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying is I have this, I have the, the registers here. This is this is a memory block inside the CPU. Yes. Right. So this is the other memory block. Um, What's the tail? Temp is another um, memory block. Um, basically, if you're, basically, if this is storing the result, I want to say, temporarily. Um, because basically, is this is A, this is B, so, um, I want to say this is this. So the controller, based upon the instruction that's being um, executed, it would say, I want to add two numbers together. It goes up here and tells the ALU, okay, I want you to add. And it's going to say, okay, here's the first number you want to add. Here's the second number I want you to add. And then it says, okay, add it together. Put in temp. And then whatever you told it, to, based on the instructions, say, I want to put temp into one of the registers here. So this temp gets moved down into. But there is no error from processing unit to control unit. Yeah, there's no error. So how do you put temp or variable into registers. Um. 
Probably Monday I'll show um, a little bit more. So these registers, um, we are, we're using LC3, so we have uh, seven of those, which hopefully you say R0 through R7. Should be six. Sorry, there's eight of them. Instruction the way it looks like in assembly. I want to add registers. Uh, I want to. This is where I'm going to. Uh, where you're going to store. This is um, basically your commercial number. You want to call it. This is the second. I need to put some data in here, so I'm just going to put easy numbers so I can add them together. Um, so what happens is um, is that R01 and R02 in the X? Yeah, hex. It's hex. I'm going to go here and say my, this is the program counter, it's going to point to memory location, I want to say hex 3000, so this is my memory, inside memory at hex 3000 is this instruction, right? Um, I said Monday I'm going to show, probably show you the binary, so it's in binary. Right. Um, so this is in that memory location. So the, this the P, uh, PC is pointing currently at this location. So I'm going to always probably start drawing arrows in memory, showing where my PC is pointing at. So what happens is this instruction gets loaded into here. Now we have add R0, R1. Loaded into um, the control unit. Ready? The control unit will um, do a process called um, uh, decode. So, first one was I need more bucket space. So, right there. So a PC was pointing here. I went and fetched. I fetched this instruction from memory and I put it into the control unit. So we call that the, the fetch state of our instruction cycle. Um, the next thing is called the code. So then the control unit interprets um, this. So basically it's, oh, I'm adding, I'm adding. That's my um, D 
speak of. That's what I'm going to be doing. So it figures out that it's going to um, do the add instruction. So it knows that it has to use um, register zero, 0, register 1, register 2, and it has to use the ALU because I'm doing a add instruction. So it, knows it needs to know it uses that. So then, after it decodes, um, it does a stage um, called um, evaluate address. Um, since we're doing this instruction, um, we're not using memory at all, so it does not have to evaluate any addresses. Basically, it, it knows it's using these registers. If I had a memory location, it would have to evaluate where this memory location is. Um, it'll make more sense when we do memory instructions of what happens in the evaluate address. But this always happens, basically, in CPU. Um, knows that it doesn't have to um, calculate any addresses in memory. Um, so once that's done, it does um, fetch um, upper end. So basically, is these are known as our upper end. I'm gonna draw it here. So. These are upper ends, so it's going to fetch these. So basically, it's, it's here, that way they're ready to use. So it was, we want to add R1 to R2, so it's going to send these off to here. So this is R1, now this is going to be R2. So the data has been sent to the processing unit. Um, so then we, now we can execute. So then the ALU now processes our number. We did 1 plus 2, it's going to be 3. So 3 is stored here, and then 3 is sent down to um, the register. So then 3 is uh, now loaded to R0. And then um, that's what we call the last stage of um, storing our result. Sorry, that's probably a quick um, flow through. So will the controller tell tell it to display it to the output at that point? Um, no. Does, when does, Basically, that's all it does. The next line of instruction could say... Yeah, the next instruction it could come from. Could and be, the pointers move down. 